Well, no, I think they were genuinely the first, although there were various Europeans who, um, and the Germans had a system going um, 180 lines and I think 441, not long after. So when we come to the after the war period, this is roughly what we, hang on, that's not, I've got the wrong button again. Come here. That's it. We've got 405 lines in this country, uh, and then in 1964, uh, on a particular day, the BBC tried to launch BBC Two. Unfortunately, it was a bloody great fire in the um, engine room, and they had to start again the following day. And if any of you were watching that first night, it was an absolute nightmare. You know, they, they had the 405 line up the, up the 625 transmitter, the 625 line up the 405 line. It was, uh, yeah, it really was a nightmare. Anyway, the Americans got going in about 1948 with 525 lions. The, French, uh, the Europeans, 625 lions, 7 to 8 megahertz channel. Um, and the French started off with 8, 19 lions, positive mod, and I think AM sound. Um, so there was a mixture of transmission standards uh, for, around Europe. So let's move on. Um, around about 1948, EMI were experimenting with a miniature super emitron camera. Um, you see the, the electron gun here and the photosensitive target there. And they used it for some 400, sorry, 1,001 lines experiments. And that's the electron, electron tube and the scanning assembly. And there are some pictures. You, they really don't. It's very difficult to tell which is which of these. <coughs> this lot, actually. Um, so let's move on. That was a thousand and one. The bottom one, yeah. What is special about What is special about the number of thousand? An odd number of lines. Okay. So we move on. 1948, um, the 1250 line system was, was put up and uh, preceded by the Japanese 1125 line system. But the Europeans decided they weren't going to be, they weren't going to be um, put out and they were going to go for 1250 lines. And there was a lot of 1250 line kit around and this particular scanner and Norman Green, where he's sitting in the audience somewhere, um, was involved in this, heavily involved in this scanner because he worked for a ITCA at the time. And there is a Hitachi 1250 line camera. They got into very bad odor with the, um, with the rest of the Japanese companies for making a 1250 line transmitter because it was outside the 1125 edict, you see. Um, anyway, and there's the OB vehicle outside the Elysee Palace in Paris. And, they, and there's the, another, one of the cameras. They did a, um, a thing with the French president, who I can't remember who's... Who was it, Norm? Mitterrand. Mitterrand. Okay, good. So, there we are. Um, now, in Montreux in, in 1986... Um, there was a fair bit of 1125 kit around, and I'm not sure I didn't even make an 1125 SPG, which had, was demonstrated there, but that's another story for another day. Um, now, the problem at the time was that the images had to be displayed at that time on CRTs, which were, you know, you imagine a 32-inch CRT was quite heavy, uh, if any of you have ever had to lift a 32-inch uh, telly, quite, quite, you know, you needed two or three people to get it into the right position. And, um, and of course, in the early post-war years, all the processing was done on valves, you know, great steaming things with heaters and filaments and stuff inside. But as the, th the uh, semiconductor industry got 
busy um, and they produced all sorts of things like analog to digital converters. Now, in about 1980, an analog digital converter would cost 500 pounds. <laughs> and now I think it would probably cost a few pounds for the use. A gig of RAM, thousand, well, certainly hundreds of pounds, if not a thousand of pounds. And now you can buy, well, there's probably 32 gig of, uh, well, there's certainly 16 gig, and I think I paid three pounds for that. So, things have changed dramatically. Now, in 1988, there was a big push by the EBU to coordinate all the 1250 line uh, work going on in the EBU. And they had a pavilion on the beach of Brighton during the IBC. The only trouble was they had some really rather large, hairy security guards and unless you were sworn by probably the Prime Minister or the President of France, you didn't get in. And David Wood, who some of you will know, for this uh, 1250 line display and it was amazing the security guards disappeared the next day and they realized they had put up a big PR um, boom uh, you know so they, they let everyone in and everyone saw what 1250 lines was sort of about the various things like Mac and HD Mac were proposed but they were sort of quasi-analog um, systems. And they, they didn't really work terribly well. And so a lot of work was done um, to um, make displays. And uh, well then, of course, as the time moved on, we're, we're, we're sort of 19, early 1990s now. Um, flat panel displays began to appear. Um, and, and so we moved on. And f for example, um, in around about 2004, you could buy a 32-inch LCD belly for under a thousand pounds. Well now you can probably buy a 55 inch one and it will do 3D. Um, and indeed the old golden rule in the CRT days that you paid 10 pounds an inch for the display is roughly right even today. Mm -hmm. 40 inches, 400 pounds. <coughs> so, we start with, with um, the 4K spec, or UHD 1 as it's called, because UHD 2 is 8K. <coughs> and the reason for doing a lot of this was that the 3D was not really selling very well and the receiver manufacturers who are either Korean or Japanese in the main decided that you know, they really wanted to sell sets and introduce people to new technology etc. So 4K was, the, was possibly the next answer. There were a, few, a lot of problems and we'll he hear about them on the way. So, this is the spec for UHD 1. And if you're shooting at 60 frames a second, 
And there are those who say we should be shooting at 120 frames a second, which we'll come on to later. Um, you, you end up with about 250 megabits, megahertz bandwidth. Now, if you, if you, that's a bit rate of, with three channels of about 10 gigabits. And the clock speed for that is sort of around about 600 megahertz. So nothing trivial, and your memories, if you're shooting individual channels or raw, your memories have got to be capable of working at that speed. They can't drop out. And obviously if the frame rate goes up, then the bit rate goes up. It follows the night and the day. The corresponding SDI spec is 12G, if you think of... Um, cooking SDI being well, HD SDI 1080i being sort of 2G then you end up with, with um, 12G although there's a company called Black Magic that seems to manage with, do it with only 6G and I don't quite know why but that, that's, that's the thing but the cable needs to be short and of extremely good quality and you pointed that out to me the other day um, so we have, a, we have another problem which is that what is material is available well we've got hang on I'm doing the wrong thing stop it while you're finding your slide can I just ask one question silver BMW estate parked out the back Move it, we're trapping the uh, catering lady in. So there'll be no sandwiches for you tomorrow. I'll give oh. you the itinerary, so she's going to really have that. Thank you, Mike. So th here's the sort of beyond HD, 2D. Which we tend to be thinking about at the moment. UHD 1 and UHD 2, well, let's concentrate on UHD 1, 4K. Because that's the, um, the thing. Now, the... Now, various broadcasters, such as Sky, have put out experimental transmissions, and I think the BBC... Yeah. The, the World Cup but um, it's, it's difficult other than satellite to think of, think of how even if you've got a spare transmitter in your back garden well you know you could possibly stick some 4K up it if, if the transmitter was capable of it and uh, but we're not given that and uh, well not very often anyway so it probably has to be done at... Well, there's no downtime on transmitters, is there, these days? I mean, there was a time when you did things in the middle of the night uh, on the BBC or ITV transmitters, but I, they just carry on. So without putting up a special transmitter or a satellite, there's really no way of getting it around. Although um, Sony are selling 4K... TVs and they will sell you a special disc recorder or UH, uh, I think it's a it's a version of Blu-ray with about 10 films on it and I read only today that um, Samsung have done a deal with Fox uh, where they will supply an external sort of player with with films made by Fox of course so if you want to, if you want to put money in Murdoch's pocket that's the way you got to go I don't particularly, but there we go. So, now, let us, let us see what we're, we're playing at. The pixel rate, which is just worth looking at, and then we start down here, it's so small it hardly registers, but it's, um, yeah, it's pretty small. I mean, we're talking, if we talking SDI, we're talking about um, 270 megabits a second down here. 
and then we move up to up and uh, so it goes up until you get to 8k at 120 which is apparently the Japanese are, are talking about 120, 120 frames um, you know I wonder if there's enough memory in the round, but uh, the trouble is they'll shrink it and you'll get it, it'll all go into a you know, half an hour program, 8K, 120 frames in a memory stick. But not while I'm alive, I shouldn't think. Anyway, um, NHK are talking seriously of transmitting 8K by 2020. Now, Let's move on to that. This, just, just to get, remind us of the formats that are, that are around, we've got sort of very low res basic DVD down here, um, 1440 by 720, which is 720p, 1920, 1080, digital cinema, which is slightly higher than, 10, than 1080p, uh, and then 4K. And there is a, a digital cinema. 4K version, which is um, 4.1. Four, I can't do the arithmetic, but it's it's. Um, 4.160. 4.160. Thank you. Um, 4.160 by 2.160. So that's those are the sort of formats which are you, you know in use. I haven't gone to the 8K one because uh, it doesn't seem uh, appropriate. Um, now. Let's I hope the slide wasn't big enough. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Well, I, I, if I'd made it, you know, the, the thing at the bottom yeah, left yeah. would have been ridiculous, wouldn't it? Right. Um, advantages of UHD. Well, we get an enhanced viewing experience. The sense of reality is improved. Uh, enhanced audio experience. Cinema experience brought home. Uh, less fatigue. Well, I'm not sure about that one. But I think the point to notice is that um, this little point here, viewing distance at one and a half picture heights. Now, it seems there's a bit of a peak there. That's, there's your 4K line, and there's your 8K line. It seems almost that the accepted wisdom is that you should watch 8K at three quarters of the picture height away. But that doesn't seem to be quite true in terms of rating. And it would seem that one and a half times picture height is about optimum for both systems. Now, I have to say that in, in my house, I have a 42 inch screen and we sit six picture heights away. And you can just about notice an improvement, in def very slight improvement in resolution if you switch to HD. So we don't bother me, it's the time. Yeah. Well, we've, got, we've got a 55 inch box and we must sit about, um, I don't know, one and a half, two metres away from it. So we're quite close. So you're probably about three metres. Oh, bloody hell. Excuse my French. Yeah. And it actually looks better in HD, certainly, than it does in standard. Yeah, yeah. You're probably sitting about here. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there we go. Right, let's go to the next thing. Well, this is, this is just a sort of a more graphic illustration of um, a, a where you sit to watch. Um, I mean, that's your distant viewer and that's a close viewer and, and that's your three, three quarters picture height and that's your one and a half picture height and you can't read that because it wasn't very readable uh, very uh, legible on the slide now I'm going to show you something here um, look at that brickwork and you can probably just see the pointing okay can you see it <laughs> just this, this region here is what I would like you to look at. With difficulty. Hmm? With difficulty. If you've got your binoculars, I can just about see it from here. Anyway, I'll ask you to 
assume you can see some, some pointing. And then we go to HEVC at 6 megabits. And the rest of the picture doesn't seem to change very much, but that is getting awful soft, that brickwork. I don't think you can really see it, except with the eye of faith. Hmm? Go back. Go back the slide. I'll go back. I'll, I'll, I'll go forward. Because I put it in again. We're cooking ah. the books with a zoom lens here. Huh? We're cooking the books with a zoom lens. Okay, right. Well, that's the bit you want to look at. The black changes as well, doesn't it? Yes, it, 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 there, were, there were two, uh, you know, uh, LHP yeah. things that I've, I copied. So it's, it's not a very accurate uh, thing.